I'm going to kick off with a few slides to give you an update on your association and where we're going uh, and why the information you've been supplying at other conferences as well has been supplying is important, particularly this year where we're going into the strategic review. This is the latest UK data on CLL in the UK. So there's about just over 4,000 new cases a year. 72 is the median age for treatment. Around 30,000 patients diagnosed in the last 10 years. Now we know there's a lot of patients still alive now and doing well and celebrating life. Blood cancer is the fifth most common cancer in the UK. I'll come back to that. But it's now the third biggest cancer killer. Now, great news that the big four, which are breast, prostate, lung and bowel cancer, have had a tremendous amount of focus, investment and research. And as a result, the survival rates have gone up well in there. What part of our challenge going forward is to make sure we now get as much of resource and investment and research into the blood cancer group, which is why we've joined the Blood Cancer Alliance. So as a group, as a collective of 12 blood cancer charities, we can punch above our weight and get, get some uh, attention from the UK government, NHS and NICE. You've already heard from Olga about the research, about how people heard about CLSA. And consultants and nurses, I remember when I went in, they'd never heard of CLSA. It wasn't until I did my investigation with Dr. Google that I came up, so I'm one of the 65% that got it through the internet. Now, actions we've got underway already are how can we maximize the hit rate on search engines? So we're refreshing and renewing the website that I'll talk about in a minute. Um, and how to work with clinics. Uh, something I'll tell you now, uh, I'm working with Janssen's. One of the ideas we're exploring, and if it works with Janssen's, we'll talk to other pharmaceuticals, is they have an army of paid professional account managers that regularly visit clinics, surgeries all over the country to give latest updates on trials, research, treatment, medication that's being developed and engage with the NHS that way. Provisionally, I've got a green light from Janssen's that we can brief and give them the new leaflets and pamphlets to the account management teams they have and they will drive it in. So they will give it directly to the clinical nurse specialists, the medical teams around the country. So I'm hoping that will make a difference in that area. As members, I'm sure you know about some of the things we do. But the helpline, Gail, leads on. That, that's getting a regular hit rate, and we get a range of information from there, a range of requests. Some of it's just pragmatic, so thinking uh, travel insurance, what's the best place to go to? And I've benefited from that. Um, I've decided to go to Madeira um, later in the year. I used the Meerkat-type website. And they told me it was £300 for me to get insurance. I found one of the recommended webs, uh, CLL, cancer specialist websites, it's £30. There's a £270 saving there. Health Unlocked, as I say, it's 13,000 strong. I do recommend if you're not a member, if you haven't joined, again, it's free, I would. There's some smashing people, not just Paul and I, obviously, on there. There's some smashing people, and maybe more importantly, there's a wealth, a richness of experience and expertise in there. Uh, I'd say the caveat I'd put on it and the challenge that people like Paula who helps on the administration uh, side of it is uh, it started out as a UK only for UK people. It's now grown and it's so popular, it's worldwide and we're in the minority, I think it's about a third are UK based. So you'll get a lot of sweeping statements from Western type people on there saying no one should be having FCR anymore on there that we need to moderate. So it's people like Paula that I want to thank for the moderation and influence so that it, you can have rich, open, unbiased, hopefully, discussions on there. The conferences. Uh, I'd, since I came in, I went to Bart's, I think was my first conference when I joined. It was a real eye-opener for many of the reasons that have come up uh, already. So that ability to find out you're not alone. I don't know about you, I sit in mine in the Macmillan Cancer Unit in Milton Keynes. I look around, I'm thinking, there must be some other buggers in here that have got CLL, but they don't wear a badge. The NHS can't tell you who they are. What I've been doing in my branch is I've built up the relationship with the specialists and nurses and say, I'm there, tell them. You've got my phone number. I'm happy for them to phone me. 
So a couple of times I've had people, I've had conversations in the corridors there, people who have just been recently diagnosed, and they want a friendly hand, an empathetic ear. Unfortunately, they're stuck with me, but I can point them in the, the right direction. A lot of work on lobbying there, a lot of time and effort that goes behind the scenes. And because now we've hit that magic 10%, the 3,000 mark, because of the great work, the previous trustees, and uh, I've, I've met Paul here, who was right at the very beginning of the start of the CLSA. So it's evolved and grown over the year and been successful. But we've now got the ear of specialists. We can now get into the strategic movers and shakers. We've got sponsors, Lord Forsyth now, that can put questions in the Houses of Parliament on our behalf. So recent, recent um, achievements, I Bruton I'm sure you've heard all about, and Simon O'Neill, the head reporter for the Times, who's got CLL that we worked with, along with others there, to promote and ensure that ibrutinib was used by the NHS as a second line treatment after FCR and follow the NICE uh, guidelines there. But that was a success over there. The 3,000 members was a clear uh, point for us, but we need more. You know, it's free, so why aren't more people joining and using? Some people I know, once they're diagnosed, they don't want to know, that's fine. But I think from the touch points and the the fact that the uh, NHS themselves aren't aware of us, I think there's a lot of people out there that if they knew about this organization, they would join. For the first time ever, six conferences in 2019. Well done, Olga. Olga's been instrumental in the design, the structure, and the rollout of the conference program. A very heavy demand. Olga's only 27, but it's this type of work that's made her look like this. The launch of the e-bulletin, the feedback we're getting from members is this is very good, getting every two or three months, getting an update on what's going on, how you can be involved, fundraising, etc. Brian, who leads on that area, isn't here. He's got a, a heavy cold, couldn't be with us, but thank, thank goodness um, he's put that together, and that's getting good results. Surveys, Olga's already talked about the surveys, and we will continue and repeatedly use surveys. And with the new website, we'll have a, a, a tool on there that can put out pulse surveys. So if we've got a key question or an issue that you've got, we can flash it around members for feedback. You've talked, oh, Nora, the under 60 group. I thought I was going to be able to join because I thought it meant the IQ, but it, it doesn't. So, but it's been very successful. So well done, Nora. And I see you've got a big t table there of enthusiasts there. And champions. I won't talk about champions. Michael's going to give you an update on champions and why they're important to us if you can give some time to help us spread the word and get the message out there. So plans for the next 12 months. It's still to increase that membership and presence. I look around these conferences and there's some smashing people. I meet some smashing people every time. They might not feel the same about me, but I do like meeting people and finding out where they're from, what they're doing, where they are on their journey, and the smiling faces on there. But if I look around, it's predominantly white, fairly well-educated uh, people from the mi middle classes. And I think Olga made the point earlier, I'd like to go, in that 30,000, are we representative? I'm not sure we are. So how do we get the word out to the people who can't afford maybe to come to the conferences or are struggling uh, uh, with um, getting access to the information? I went rarely to the local Milton Keynes group. I went to it a month ago. And Donna from Leukemia Care, they run the local group, said, oh, I'll introduce you to this lady. She's got the same CLL profile as you. I'm 11P deleted. And uh, she said, oh, I would just swap stories. And she said, how sad that when it comes to treatment, you're likely to die very quickly. And I said, what, what do you mean? She says, well, when I was diagnosed 15 years ago, I was told the only treatment was FCR. And with my profile, it wasn't likely to be very good for very long. And I said, have you had a discussion with them since then? I said, no. And they come from that generation. They would not ask those questions of uh, the specialists in there. So she's been going for 15 years, waiting for that trigger moment when they creep up and it comes to treatment. And she's been preparing for her own funeral. And when I started talking to her about CLSA, didn't know, they haven't got a computer, uh, family's moved on. Um, <coughs> and I said about venetoclax, I talked about ibrutinib, she started crying on there. And I just gave her a cuddle. So now that's charged me up saying, so how do we do, how can we get out to those people that don't have access or the capability or ability to get hold of this wonderful group? We want to increase income. 
Uh, we've been very lucky. I'll, I'll make the plug now. We're going to introduce, as other charities have done, the free will process. So look out for that. Please, if you've done your will, make sure you can put a codicil on it. But uh, looking for how do we get income? And luckily, uh, a, a member, well, luckily for us, but sadly for her, who passed away last year, we got a very generous donation, which means we're going to renew all the badging, the branding. Uh, it's helped us with the new computer and technology, and more importantly, the website development. So the brand new website will be an all singing, all dancing, latest one with the latest technology on it for people to book online, make donations online, sending out emails, and, and so on. A Scottish group, uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, after the next board meeting, will be back up to a full 12 trustees. Sadly, it will be Olga's last one. Uh, I do want to pay recognition for the amount of work Olga has done over the years. If it wasn't for Olga, the structure of the conferences, the quality of information that comes out of them and goes onto the website, the reputation we have with the CLL specialists, which means they're queuing up often to come and talk on these conferences, wouldn't be there. Plus the plethora of other stuff. She's leading the work on the research and redesign and reissue of the members pack. And uh, I call her my Rolls-Royce engineer. Sometimes she can be a pain in a certain part of the anatomy because as an engineer, my spilling ain't what it should be. But she's very good at correcting and, and grafting it and being a, a wise counsel. So I'd like to give a round of applause to Olga for all her work. But hopefully we will be getting a new trustee joining us, uh, should he be mad enough to accept at the October board meeting, and we'll be launching a Scottish group. Because as you're aware, maybe more so than I am, with Scottish getting a sort of semi-independence in some areas of governance, the actual NHS Scotland and uh, the equivalent of NICE and the APPG groups is very different and getting more different. So we need a representation in the Scottish group. And ideally, longer term, it would be nice to have the same for Wales. So we're going to relaunch, refresh the website, the information pack, and as you know, the five-year strategy, which will inform next year's business plan. Fundraising, that dirty word. I do want to thank each and every one of you that does any fundraising on there, from tea, cycling, running, cake sales, etc. If it wasn't for you, we couldn't run a lot of what we run now.